The Diablo 4 server slam is finally happening tomorrow, and with that comes a ton of changes, including even class changes and perks. We also have some post-launch stuff to talk about, as well as the confirmed dates for Season 1, and even some battle pass info that's been recently updated, and we'll also briefly go over the MTX versus in-game cosmetics. We got a lot to talk about. What's up, brothers? We're back in with another video, and today we're checking out all things Diablo 4. And we got the server slam tomorrow, May 12th. I'm sure people are super excited for, and we even have a new cap, but it's only to level 20. Now, as far as the server slam goes, all five classes are receiving an insane amount of changes. This ranges from perks, abilities, luck hit chance, so many different things here. Let's try to get through them kind of quickly and just kind of go over the basis of what is changing for each class. For both Challenging Shout and Warcry, those abilities both received a nerf to both the reduction time, the time that you're reducing the damage, and to also the numbers themselves, the percentage damage reduction. Enhanced Bash got more Fortify, while Hammer of Ancients actually got its damage nerf, Violent Hammer of the Ancient got a longer duration, Furious Upheaval got a times 50% damage nerf, Enhanced Double Swing got 10% additional Fury added, I know people are really gonna like this one, Whirlwind got a damage buff, so spin to win, Enhanced Whirlwind got more Fury on hit, and Furious Whirlwind got doubled the damage of that node in that specific perk. So Whirlwind is gonna be a great ability coming this beta, or at least seemingly so. Now for Strategic Challenging Shout, it got Thorns decreased, and Enhanced Iron Skin got double the effect. Now it absorbs 10% of damage of your maximum life. Outburst got a 75% Thorns nerf. Tough as Nails got a big Thorns nerf and a bleeding buff. So seemingly they don't want a lot of Thorns build, or it's, yeah, I guess Thorns build was kind of overpowered in the last beta, but not really, although I thought it was kind of a cool build. Seemingly they just don't want you standing around, I guess. Rallying Cry also got a massive nerf. Tactical Rallying Cry got a minus 5 Fury on cast and a minus 30% resource gen. Massive nerfs to Rallying Cry there. Marshall got a damage reduction. Power War Kai got a change to flat damage increase, while Mighty War Cry got a fortified value reduced, and Booming Voice got a duration reduced. So we have two buffs there and one nerf. Gutero Yell got a DR cut in half, while Aggressive Resistance got DR reduced, and DR meaning damage reduction. Counter Offense got a damage reduced, and Defensive Stance got a DR reduced as well. Definitely some nerfs on the Barbarian, but some buffs to Whirlwind, it seems like they're going to be taking even more damage and their Thorns isn't going to be as high, or at least as useful. Now moving on to Druid, which got the most amount of changes. Earth Spike got a more Spirit Gen and Fierce Earth Spike got more Fortify. Maul got more Spirit Gen as well, and Enhanced Maul got more Fortify. Wild Maul doubled its proc chance while Fierce Maul reduced range and radius. Storm Strike reduced its Spirit Gen while Claw got more Spirit Gen. Landside got a sizable damage drop. Well, Enhanced Pulverize got a weird nerf here where you need to remain healthy for two seconds longer for Overpowered to activate. Shred got its first attack that has a dash. Enhanced Heal was taken from 2% down to 1%. Lightning Storm increased its damage. While Wild Impulse has got its reduced cost and damage. And Abundance got a reduced Spirit Gen. Now Predatory Instinct got reduced crit. Debilitating Roar got its damage reduction increased. While Innate Debilitate got its slow increased. Now Cyclone Armor got damage Damage reduction halved and damage doubled, while Enhanced Slycone got its slow duration increased. Raven's active damage doubled, Vine Creeper got its name changed and active damage tripled. Wolves had their active damage tripled, that's the 17 damage meme. Elemental Exposure got its lucky hit chance reduced, Boulder just got a clarified in its description. Trample got its damage tripled as well, while Enhanced Trample got 120% more damage. So that's definitely an ability to look out for for a lot of damage there. Provocation got time to remain in wear boar form extended, and Perfect Storm got its spirit reduced and damage reduced. Now Necro got the second least amount of changes next to Rogue. Decompose got a more essence generation. Bone Splitters got a huge damage nerf, very devastating. Enhanced Bone Splitters got 5% nerf, big oof. Bloodlance got a 50% damage buff. Paranormal Bone Spears got its essence cost buff. While Enhanced Bone Spears got a damage buff. And Imperfectly Balanced got a cost and damage nerf. Corpse Explosion got a 50% damage nerf. Plague Corpse also got a damage nerf. Fueled by Death also got a damage nerf and duration buff, while Skeletal Mage got a flat buff and a scaling buff, Decrepify got some weird mid-level scaling small changes, Blighted Corpse increased the Blood Orb chance, Bonded and Essence got its word change to clarify the skill effect, while Death's Defense got a nerf to minion survival. Last but not least, the Golem got a base damage nerf. Now Rogue has the least amount of changes, Advanced Twist got a 75% CDR nerf, Enhanced Penetrating Shot got a x 10% damage 
damage nerf, reactive defense got a DR increase, countering smoke grenade got a plus one per second if vulnerable, concealment got a movement speed bonus, subverting stealth got a vulnerable duration increase, countering poison trap got a chance increase, countering dark shroud needs to be more active to have less crit than before, subverting dark shroud has a movement speed increase, while agile got double value increased and its duration increased, mending obscurity tripled its health and stealth, poison imbued got its damage increase, blended poison got a damage increase, enhanced shadow got a crit chance reduced, and precision imbued got its crit chance reduced as well. And last but not least we have sorcerer. Enhanced spark got its chance doubled, glinting spark got a duration increase but its cap reduced, charge bolts got a damage increase, enhanced charge bolts also got a damage increase, incinerate got a base damage increase to 33% at level 1, chain lightning base damage reduced by 14% at level 1, and it has one less chain. Greater Chain Lightning got a modifier damage reduced by times 15% per bounce off, and that's specific to bouncing off the player character. Enhanced Ice Shard got a baseline bounce improved, and Enhanced Dominance got a damage reduction. Flame Shield level duration scaling was reduced and its burning damage was increased. Frost Nova got its duration increased. Enhanced Frost Nova got its CD reduction reduced, which is actually a nerf. Mystical Frost Nova is now a less vulnerable duration versus bosses. Ice Armor has less barrier gained from damage, and Mystical Ice Ice armor is also less barrier gain from damage against vulnerable enemies. Hydra got a base damage reduced from 30% to 12%, which is a 60% damage nerf, as well as minus 2 seconds to his duration. Massive nerf to that. Ice Blades got its damage nerfed and enchantment nerfed 50%. Enhanced Ice Blades got its CDR reduced, which is a nerf. Summoned Ice Blades got its CDR global percentage nerf. Align the Elements got a DR total nerf and a DR per second nerf. Protection got a barrier duration reduced from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. Meteor got a 60% damage buff, enchantment buff, people are coming this is going to be the meta build, and then for the ultimate deep freeze it got a damage doubled. But that does round up our class changes. Now we'll quickly look through the in-game versus MTX cosmetics, and honestly they actually look pretty good on both ends here, and really I'm only noticing a big difference with maybe Sorceress getting maybe some better armor in the shop, although Necromancer compared to the shop item looks actually pretty good, especially when you compare it to WoW when all the transmog stuff and all the things in WoW is all overdone with the stuff in the store. Everything in the store is just better than in-game, which is just kind of sad, so hopefully Diablo 4 kind of holds the ground like New World did and kind of has it like this as well. Now Diablo Season 1 is actually expected to arrive in mid to late July, which is everybody a nice month and a half, which I think is perfect timing. Now for the battle pass, it will have 90 tiers and it's seasonal, and that season should last about three months, and these battle passes do not carry over. The premium battle pass will cost $10, and the accelerated battle pass will cost $25. Also to note, if you have the ultimate edition, you could save your accelerated battle pass for the second one or whenever you want. You don't have to just use your accelerated battle pass on the first one. There will also be a cash shop, but it says all cosmetics cosmetics only and no pay to win whatsoever which thankfully yes finally no pay to win hopefully it's very big copium but let's hope at least they have it in writing here for now. And for cosmetics, it will include armors, weapons, horses, horse armor, horse decorations, emotes, title icons, and tombstones, which will display whenever you die. But that should about round it up and cover it for this video. If you like, I like, like, and subscribe. And until next one, deuces.